Good morning. If you're able, would you please stand and join hands as we pray together this morning? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day that you've given us to come into your house and worship you. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to open our hearts to receive your spirit so that by that same spirit we can bless the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, and with that note, it's a reminder that Easter is not a day. Easter is a season. Easter is where we all live as Christians. I'm glad that you're here uh, this second Sunday in the Easter season at St. Mark Church, and I hope you'll uh, extend a welcome to all those who are seated near you. Uh, a special welcome to anyone who's a guest with us today. Uh, be sure after today's service to introduce yourself uh, to an usher or a greeter. Uh, we have a gift to share with you and some information about life here at St. Mark. Uh, I'd call all of your attentions to the uh, blue care cards in the pew in front of you. If everyone would take one of these and share your presence with us today, a spot for prayer concerns and other communications there on the back. A couple of things to remind you of next Sunday, uh, if you've uh, been visiting or worshiping with us for a while, it's St. Mark 101, our chance to uh, meet together, have lunch together, learn a little bit more about membership at St. Mark, uh, how, we, how we follow Christ here, and uh, what it means to be a Methodist, what it means to be here at St. Mark. Join us uh, after, worship, after this service uh, next Sunday for uh, a couple of hours. Be together. Details about that are in your bulletin. 
Uh, this week is the National Day of Prayer, Thursday, May the 1st. Our sanctuary will be open from 7 in the morning to 7 in the evening. If you want to come and, uh, and pray here, there'll be uh, prayer hosts uh, here who will be here with you to share some information with you and uh, help you on that journey. There's also some uh, uh, information inside your bulletin in case, uh, especially a full prayer, one of the official prayers for our nation for this National Day of Prayer. Uh, if you're not able to join us, take this and let this be a part of your uh, prayer and devotional experience this week. Uh, also a reminder, next Sunday will be Compassion International Sunday. Uh, Compassion International is one of the ways that St. Mark uh, partners with children around the world in an effort to alleviate uh, the very serious needs of poverty around the world. There are ways that you can partner with individual children in individual countries. Uh, and next week you'll get a chance to, uh, look over, uh, to, to look over some of those options and opportunities uh, and hear from those who have, uh, who have found a certain amount of joy and, uh, and satisfaction in, in extending God's hand. Of, of, of grace and mercy in that way. Stand now and greet those around you in the name of the Lord.
Our time of worship continues with a time of prayer and a reminder that the altar is open if you want to come and kneel and in that way signify the joining of your heart with all of our hearts as we pray together. Uh, today we, uh, uh, of course, begin with prayers of thanksgiving for uh, 10 years, uh, over a decade of, of music ministry with uh, Ken Bailey. Uh, we want to remember our friend of the week, Mary Barbary. Remember uh, Mary, uh, pray for her, and if you uh, will, uh, reach out with a call or a note this week. Remembering Ann Dermer, Ann uh, remains hospitalized after a, uh, after a surgery this last week. And remember also Dale Womack from our St. Mark staff. Dale will be having back surgery this week. Uh, and our prayers with her through that surgery and through the recovery following. Let's go to the Lord together in prayer. With the psalmist we pray. Keep me safe, O oh my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my good thing, and apart from you I have no good thing. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for us in pleasant places. Surely we have a delightful inheritance I will praise the Lord who counsels me, even at night my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. O oh Lord, you make known to me the path of life. You fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Oh God, as we come today to worship, we come perhaps forgetful forgetful of your goodness and your grace, forgetful of your invitation in Jesus Christ to draw near to you, to worship from a place of closeness, from a place that's certain in your love. Perhaps we feel more comfortable at a distance. Help us today, O oh Lord. Help us today to remember that you make known to us the path of life, that you fill us with joy in your presence and that eternal pleasures are ours with you, near you, at your right hand. Almighty God, forgive us the places where we've forgotten the goodness of your hand. Forgive us for the places we've trusted our own wisdom and sought our own path. We give you thanks that in Jesus Christ we have continually an offer of salvation, continually an offer of refreshing and renewal. Continually the offer of the presence of God's own spirit to live in us, to shape us, and to remind us, O oh God, of your great love for us. O oh God, in every place where we would give thanks, open our hearts to deeper and fuller ways of knowing and trusting you. Where our hearts are touched by grief or by pain let us know that you are our healing and you are our hope where our physical bodies or the bodies of those that we love are racked with pain let us know there your promise and the hope of healing that is ours in you oh god we yield our lives to you as we yield our prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who is your love for us, we pray in his name and we pray repeating together his words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Well, there's other things that we have that can protect us. I'm going to show one of them to you. This is this right here. What is this? That's our Bible. Now, sometimes we don't think our Bible is something that can protect us. But when you think about things like times when you're lonely, think about times when you're sad, when you're having questions, the Bible can protect us from those things. I want to read a verse to you real quick to give you an example. It says, Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, You are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. And so that's um, telling us that we are not alone. So the Bible protects us from, uh, from bad things that I think are going to come out later that's going to be bad for us. All right? So I want to encourage you guys. As you put on sunscreen, how many guys you put on sunscreen today? Because it is so beautiful. When you put on sunscreen, I want you to think about how the Bible can protect us and guide us and show us the way. All right? Let's bow our heads and pray for this. Dear God, we thank you for your word and the Bible. Trust in you as we read its words. We love you, God. Amen. All right, y'all have a wonderful time and holiday in heaven. Let's all stand. Heavenly Father, you are good and gracious toward us, and we come now to give out of that generosity that you have placed in our lives. May you bless these tithes and offerings to further your name here on this earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
many thanks to the bells and in, uh, in, in some traditions we'd say the, the, the organ master or the choir master back there. Many, many thanks. Many, many thanks. Quintessential. Ratatouille. Felicity. Effervescence. How about those words? It's, it's a spelling bee, all right? <laughs> Who should I call on first? Effervescence. No, not really. Uh, it's not a spelling bee. Those are words that found their way to someone's list of the most beautiful words in the English language. I don't know who sits around and comes up with lists like that. But hear them again. Effervescent, quintessential, ratatouille. They flow off the tongue, don't they? Even if they're good words or neutral words, that they sound good. But a good word isn't just a word that sounds good. A good word is a word that has good meaning, a word that you could say and a word that you could hear and a word that you could receive and maybe think about, meditate on, a word that could nourish you, a word that could give us strength. When I look at uh, Peter's first letter, uh, we're blessed in the New Testament to have two letters from the hand of Peter. Uh, Peter was uh, one of the closest, one of the, uh, the inner circle of Jesus' first followers. He was, uh, he was sort of the, uh, uh, the leader among leaders or the apostle among apostles. And his words, his words are some good words. His words are some good words uh, because he was an eyewitness. He was a front row witness to everything that Jesus said, both before and after his death, both before and after his resurrection. And so he has a place to sit. He had a, he had a vantage point that we don't have. And we can look at Peter's faith, and we can trust because of what Peter knew and what Peter experienced, what Peter saw. We can trust that Peter's faith is, is genuine. And that by learning from Peter's faith, we can learn about what it means to have a genuine faith. And that's a good word that I want to share with you today. Uh, lots of good words in First Peter and for the next several Sundays this Easter season as we connect the resurrection of Jesus Christ with his resurrected life in our lives. Every Sunday I want to bring you another good word from First Peter and genuine, genuine is today's good word. Look with me at page 638, I think that's right, 638 in the Pew Bible, First Peter chapter 1 if you have your own Bible with you. And we'll look at some of these good words, good words that challenge us and invite us, invite us to let Jesus Christ build his life in us and invite us to build our lives in him. Something genuine. First Peter, beginning at chapter 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, writing to God's elect to exile, scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who've been chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and sprinkle with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and also into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you will greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith the proven genuineness of your faith, faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire. Your faith may result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you don't see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Let's pray together. Oh God, we cannot live by bread alone. We live by every word which comes to us from your mouth. Open today our ears and our minds and our hearts that we could receive and live in your living word. 
who is Jesus Christ. Amen. Genuine. Valuable. The, the real, authentic thing. Genuine. If we want something at all, we want something that is genuine. Missionary story. Uh, friends of ours that worked in a rural northern village, primarily farming area. Uh, there was a couple there, a Russian couple, Vlad and Tanya, I'll, I'll call them. You won't meet them or this story won't embarrass them, but we'll, we'll call them Vlad and Tanya. They had, uh, they had saved and saved. They didn't have much money, but they had saved and saved. And in the, uh, in the up and down of that Kazakhstani economy, uh, when they knew their, their savings might not be worth anything, they did they did what probably any of us had never thought to do. They, they thought, well, let's, let's pool our money, and we're going to put it in something that is, that is stable and genuine. And, and they went to town. They went to the market, to the, to, to the, uh, to the bazaar in the, in, in the region center, the, the county seat, maybe we would call it. And they took all of their life savings, and they went to a money changer, and they bought a single $100 bill. That represented everything that they owned in life. That single hundred dollar bill. And they were so happy. They felt so secure. And they got back to the village. And they, and they wanted more than anything to share it with someone. And so they went to one of our missionary colleagues, our friends, and said, look what we've done. God has blessed us. He's given us this resource. And we bought a hundred dollar bill. And my friend and colleague couldn't even hide her disappointment because it wasn't a real hundred dollar bill. Vlad and Tanya, they'd never been far outside their own village. They wouldn't know what a genuine hundred dollar bill would look like. You know, even today, you see one, you got, you know, we got the stripes and the colors and all sorts of things to help us know. And, you know, everybody at the store, you, you even give them a 20, right? And they want to take the marker out and check it and fix it. They didn't know how to do that. And so they had traded a hundred dollars or a piece of paper, something you could have printed off on your desktop printer or copier at work. They wanted something genuine. We all want something genuine, don't we? We want something genuine. We want genuine faith. And we want to know, is the faith we have genuine? Uh, Peter begins helping us understand what it means to have a genuine faith. First, he starts us where all true faith starts. He starts in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He starts at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Peter says, in this great mercy, God has given you new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The life that Jesus has in the resurrection is the starting place for everything that can be called genuine faith for you and for me. Think of those first witnesses. Uh, think of those women who on that first Easter Sunday morning uh, made the trek to that garden tomb. Uh, they had been there when Jesus' body had been put there. Uh, they wondered to themselves who would roll the stone away and help them get there to, uh, to apply the next treatment of those, uh, of those aromatic oils and the, and the cloths that would care for the body of the one that they loved. They went expecting a further experience of death. And they came into a witness of never-ending life. But we don't have that privilege, do we? We won't go. Even if you went there today to Jerusalem, you wouldn't know. Is, is this just a tourist attraction that's been built up? Is this an, an authentic place that Jesus lay? We have to go to the same places even these first friends of Peter's knew. See, Peter may have seen it. Peter may have seen uh, the empty tomb, and, and the scripture tells us he did. Peter saw Jesus arisen, alive again, face to face. But even those in this very first generation, they live with the same searching desires that we live with. We hadn't seen him in the flesh. And Peter writes that. What does he say in verse 8? Though you have not seen him, you love him. Peter knew people like us. Peter knew people like us who needed something genuine to build their lives upon. And Peter pointed them, and Peter points us, to the resurrection of Jesus Christ as the only source for life and all that truly can become faith. Faith that begins somewhere else or, or doesn't get pretty quickly to the resurrection of Jesus Christ is faith in something else other than the power of the living God. Peter talks about gold. You know, we think of gold as something, uh, again, something genuine and something reliable. Uh, you may have watched the Olympic athletes this past winter. Uh, one of the things that's become a thing, you know, the Olympic athletes, they want to 
take a, a picture of themselves doing what? They get the gold medal and they bite down on it, right? You know, McDonald's even uh, you know, had, a, had a chicken McNugget, I think, commercial built around that with pictures of athletes biting down on a, on a nugget. I don't know how real the chicken is. That they want to test and see if, no offense, now you're connected to McDonald's, you know, whatever, I, that's, that's your business. Um, but, but they want to check that, they want to check the goal, right, and bite down on the goal. That's an ancient test to see if gold is real. Now don't be taking off your jewelry or whatever right now and bite on it. You can do that at home. But, but, but gold is a rather soft metal. Gold's a rather soft metal on its own, and if you bite into pure gold, you even with your teeth, you can make a little indention. It don't, don't do, take it to a jeweler. Let somebody who knows check it out and find out if it's genuine. Uh, you know, if you, if you go to chemistry lab, though, if you're curious, nitric acid. You know, we say, you know, can something pass the acid test? Put a little nitric acid on something you think is gold. You better make sure you, if you don't know if it's gold, you might mess it up. Nitric acid. If you put nitric acid on some sort of base metal that's only gold-plated, it'll start turning green. If you put it on sterling silver that's, that's gold-plated, it'll turn kind of a milky color. But if the acid remains clear after you put it on gold, you know, it's, you know you, what you have is, is real, authentic gold. Now, if we want gold that's real, we surely want a faith that's real. Peter talks about what it means, what it takes to get to that point in life where we know we have genuine faith. And Peter even touches on things that we don't like to talk about. Peter says, sometimes tests and trials Sometimes the most difficult circumstances in life, uh, the things that we would most want to avoid ourselves, are in fact opportunities that God uses to refine the genuineness of faith. Trials and tests push us toward the love that we can experience in Jesus Christ. Trials and tests push out. Trials and tests can push out self-pity, fear and greed. Uh, the ancients tell us that, uh, uh, that the ancient goldsmiths w- would look at gold, they would refine the gold in the fire. The gold would be in the crucible and it would be melted at high temperature and the impurities would float to the top and be cleansed off. And it's said that the ancient, that the ancient goldsmiths would, would continue to heat and continue to cleanse the gold until they could see their own image reflected in the, in the shimmering surface of the molten metal. Friends, that's a picture of how God wants to work genuine faith in our lives. He wants us to go through whatever we go through. He wants to work in our lives until we reveal the image of Jesus Christ, until he looks at us and he sees his own face looking back. He wants us to be genuine like Jesus Christ. Uh, That's not a surprise, really, because what we admire, what we admire in life, we become. What we admire in life, we become. Uh, a friend uh, sent me a message not long ago. They were preparing uh, to run in one of these 5K races, and the theme, it was a hero run. And uh, they were going to dress up like heroes. And so the friend uh, sent me a text wanting to know if we had capes at our house. Now, I, I don't know if any of you get a request for a cape uh, at your house to borrow. Uh, the request came to me for a cape because they know we've got children of various ages at our house. And they know uh, that, that little kids uh, you know, love superheroes, right? And when you love something, you want to be like it. And if you want to be like it, you're going to dress like it. And sure enough, I had three different capes to offer. <laughs> to offer. And we found one that was the right size and the right color and everything like that. And it, you, 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 you want to be, right? You want to be what you admire. You want to be what you look at. Children imitate their heroes because they want to be strong, they want to be valiant, they want to be courageous. Children imitate us because to them we are their heroes. So let's hope what we have is genuine, so at least they're trying to copy the right thing. Jesus Christ, Peter points, Peter points to his first friends here and he points to us that genuine faith comes when we want to be like Jesus Christ. Genuine faith We'll look more and more like Jesus Christ. He's not only the object of our faith, but he's the source of our faith, and he's the goal of our faith, a life that looks like Jesus Christ. It's a challenge for us because we have to accept, we have to get to a place where we realize what Peter says. In all this, you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Life's hard for anybody who sets their life on following Jesus Christ. Life 
is hard. Life doesn't get easy. Life doesn't get easy just because you say yes to Christ. Life can, in fact, become more and more complicated because you're trying to not just please yourself, but you're trying to please God. You're trying to please God. And so all these trials can come into our life, various suffering, various kinds of trials. Uh, the word is, is the same word as multicolored, all shapes, all sizes. You imagine it. If it's hard, if it's a trial, it might come to you. But no matter what it is that comes to you, God will work through it. God will work through it. Trials can come from A to Z. Do you ever order from Amazon.com? Do you see that logo? If you order a book, you know, they started out just as selling books. Now in some major metro areas, you can order your groceries on Amazon, and they'll deliver them fresh to you. But because they have that, they have that arrow, if you see the logo, and, you know, there's an A and there's a Z in the middle of the word Amazon, and there's a big swooshing arrow from A to Z. They want you to know. They want to be able to sell you everything you'll ever need from A to Z. Here's what I'll tell you. Whatever life throws at us from A to Z, whatever life throws at us from A to Z, God will take it and he'll refine it and he'll take it and he'll refine us and he'll work through it and he'll work around it and he'll dig under it and he'll build a bridge across it and he'll bring us to a place where our faith in him can be proven genuine. Genuine faith, genuine faith manifests itself in love for Christ. Knowing our love for Christ and knowing Christ's love for us is the best medicine for any sickness that's ever hurt anybody's heart. Love for Christ, it's, it's, it's a tonic, it's a cure-all. Love for Christ, genuine faith grows when it's loved in Christ and when it reaches and loves others in Christ. I love the line from Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. The one who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. The one who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. The love of Christ has been made real in your life, and it's been made real enough to push you beyond yourself, and you've loved someone else. You've found a way to genuine faith. Genuine faith then takes us to an experience of joy. To an experience of joy. Because in the cross of Jesus Christ, in the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have this promise. Uh, we sang about it a moment ago. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. That's, that's not just a catchy uh, set of words that we sing. That's authentic scriptural truth. That in the cross of Jesus Christ, in that genuine expression of God's heart for us, again, you'll see God's power in lots of places. But you'll never see God's mercy and his love like you see it in the cross of Jesus Christ. That is the genuine, the definitive expression of God's love for humans. In that moment, there's something there. There's an offer, an offer of an exchange. A genuine offer for a genuine exchange. He'll take whatever you have. And most of what we have is not very much. He'll take that and he'll trade it. He'll take it and he'll give us his love. He'll give us his mercy. He'll give us joy. I don't know really how that story of my friend Vlad and Tanya worked out. I, I, I hope my friend, I hope my friend traded that hundred dollar bill out. I hope she took the, the fake one and gave him a real one so that their lives wouldn't be, wouldn't be turned upside down. But I know this, that in Jesus Christ, God offers us that every day. Everything we've put our lives in or built our lives upon that is not genuine, he'll take it, and he'll trade it, and he'll make us what he is, genuine. Let's pray. Oh God, by your mercy, we offer ourselves to you. We offer ourselves because that's all we have to offer. And we offer ourselves to you because there's nowhere else to turn. Father, give us grace and work in us to build a genuine life in Jesus Christ. Amen.
May we all find God's favor as we stand in awe of Him. Amen. Amen. And amen. <laughs>